Hello, I'm Chuck Hammock with Andrews Hammock and Powell, a consulting engineering firm in Macon, Georgia. I also uh, function as a PI or principal investigator for the Department of Defense under their ESTCP program uh, that sponsored the uh, production of this video. Uh, today, we're going to focus in on a particular form of underground thermal energy storage, uh, which is sometimes called UDIS. Uh, the particular form of UDIS that we're going to look at today is the closed loop version that's called BDIS or borehole thermal energy storage. There's another version that is uh, covered elsewhere called ATIS, which is aquifer thermal energy storage. Uh, but for this short video, we're just going to focus on BDIS and not just uh, traditional BDIS that you might use with a geothermal heat pump system, which is uh, the bulk of the work we've done for DOD, but a specialized version of BETIS, uh, which we call BETIS E with a small subscript where the E indicates that it is a, a BETIS that is suitable to operate as a thermal battery for the continuous production of electricity. It could be from a waste heat source, but uh, in, uh, today we're going to cover it uh, where we're using a parabolic trough uh, concentrating solar collectors to feed this um, beta system. And as you can imagine, the plastic pipe that's used in the geothermal heat pump industry is, is not appropriate. So the, all the piping you, you will see here today will be uh, metal uh, piping. And um, in particular, amongst the beta E systems, uh, the picture in the upper right corner that you can see is representative of a, a utility scale system where the beta E might be connected to the grid. Uh, you can do a BTC just for an individual building uh, that's a critical application, but uh, uh, you can also do it at full utility scale. Um, if you'd like to do a really deep dive into this topic, uh, we would encourage you to go to the federal uh, website, which is a whole building design guide or wbdg.org. And under the Department of Defense tab for continuing education, you'll find a lot of uh, uh, webinars we've done on UDIS and BDIS and ATIS, but uh, by the summer of 2021, uh, there'll be a webinar there that is uh, focused uh, exclusively on BDIS E, the topic uh, today. And you can get AIA credits and uh, PDH credits if you uh, if you take those webinars there and uh, pass the short test at the end. So um, the Illustration in the upper right there is for a utility scale uh, BTIS E, but there's also some other neat applications uh, in the DOD realm. We think these systems are applicable uh, at even a forward operating base or FOB. And in the bottom right hand corner, you can see a, a really cool application uh, uh, that has been presented and discussed with NASA where you even uh, deploy a BTIS E. Uh, on the lunar surface, and uh, there's even possibility uh, of, of this being uh, a, a favored, we think, uh, type of system that could even be used on Mars. But we're going to spend the vast majority of our time today uh, talking about this uh, example BETIS that is representative of a utility scale system. And I wanted to just highlight a couple of the uh, key components before we get into an animation in just a moment. Um, the first one is the energy source in this application is a parabolic trough concentrating solar collectors. They can heat up a fluid like uh, water and operate a Rankin cycle. But in this case, uh, because these systems typically operate uh, maybe 100 degrees centigrade up to 500 degrees centigrade or you know around uh, 200 degrees Fahrenheit up to maybe 800 degrees Fahrenheit, the working fluid is often uh, uh, mineral oil and some other heat transfer fluids. So these parabolic troughs are going to heat up a fluid. It's going to pass through this pipe and this pump and through a series of valves here where it can either go uh, over to the organic Rankine cycle generator illustrated here, which is uh, called an ORC oftentimes, not, not referring to uh, Tolkien, but strictly the fact that there is a, a carbon atom in the working fluid and so therefore uh, we call it an organic uh, Rankine cycle instead of just the Rankine cycle. But the fluid that leaves the CSC can flow in that direction or it can flow here, uh, bypass this pump and go into the uh, betas here where the fluid is heated up from the interior 
towards the exterior and then the fluid travels back around the perimeter back up through this pipe and and then it can travel back to the uh, CSC and be uh, reheated or it can uh, return uh, to the ORC as we'll show in just a minute. So the three or four major components here are the parabolic trough solar collectors, uh, the electrical generation device, in this case an ORC. Uh, with all thermal cycles that convert heat to electricity, you have to reject heat. Uh, at power uh, plants, large ones. These are done with big parabolic uh, dry coolers. I'm sorry, parabolic cooling towers. Uh, but uh, in a smaller application, they can be done with uh, traditional uh, manufactured uh, cooling towers or adiabatic dry coolers or dry coolers. In this case, we're illustrating a dry cooler. And then again, as I mentioned before, the BETIS itself that is underground. So we're going to activate this as an animation now and cover... Uh, three different periods, sunny, cloudy, and nighttime, where uh, traditional solar-powered systems struggle to stay operational. Uh, even if you put uh, lithium-ion or other battery technologies in there, the storage component you've got is, is typically of the scale of hours, whereas in this case, we want to scale this uh, to where we might last for days. So uh, we're going to go to this animation here, and you can see the uh, sun shining here. You can see power being generated there by plasma, uh, the plasma representing the electricity. The red spheres represent the hot fluid that is going to both the orc and it is also flowing here to the betas where you can see that red core in the middle growing to the outside. So we are both charging the betas and generating electricity. But now it's gotten cloudy. And so what's happened now is we have to supplement the red spheres from the CSC with red spheres uh, coming out of the betas. And as you can see, the red core is shrinking now. So we're supplementing the CSC on a cloudy day to keep the power fully operational and what we would call dispatchable. And now here's where solar struggles. Uh, but with Abetus, we're using, we've reversed the flow and the blue spheres represent the cold fluid coming in and being heated. And we're sending that over here to the ORC to keep it going. So that's what the power companies call dispatchable. So we're keeping that power running 24-7. Uh, and then look, magically uh, each morning or if it's cloudy maybe within a couple of weeks the sun comes back out again and we go back into the dual mode where the CSC is charging both the Betus E and the uh, ORC power generator so this is just an illustration of of how you can use a Betus E to make solar systems truly dispatchable and give your facility or your uh, DOD military base a truly resilient system that can operate uh, even if a hurricane comes through and knocks the grid out for a couple of weeks, you can keep the power going. So we appreciate your time and want to encourage you once again to uh, go to the whole building uh, design guide, wbdg.org, and uh, look under the description of this YouTube video if you want to see the link to that and do a deeper dive uh, so that you can understand this topic uh, more thoroughly. Thank you for your time and uh, have a great day.